So what is a workplace scapegoat? <laughs> I swear I'm not doing these much anymore. But I just saw some great videos, so i got to do this one real quick. A, a, scapegoat, a workplace scapegoat is somebody that's going to be hated in the workplace by everybody. He's going to be isolated, ostracized. When he walks into a room, people get up, won't talk to him. They'll gossip, they'll smear his reputation. Why are they doing this? Because they all gang up and believe that if they hurt a good person, that somehow they feel bigger or something. I don't know. I'm trying to learn about how this works, right? So if you're in a workplace, and families, right? This, this comes from families and workplaces. The dynamics are very similar. If you have a narcissistic bully abuser in the workplace, he makes everyone feel like crap or he triggers their insecurities. So they're going to want someone to take that out on. And so they'll pick a target, usually the nicer guy in the group, usually the more you know competent guy in the group, and they'll bash him, they'll bully him, and they'll ultimately push him out of the job. But then when he doesn't talk to him anymore, they like, they'll, they'll text him, not realizing he's blocked them all, or they'll try to contact him to kind of get him back. Kind of like a, a, a husband that abuses his wife and calls her horrible names, tells her how worthless she is, slaps her, then when she leaves and says, F you, losers, the husband's like, come back. Is it because he loves her? So I can beat you, Shamaria. Why do you need to beat me? Because I'm a miserable, self-loathing piece of crap. Not my circus, not my monkeys. So I'm watching videos on when the scapegoat gets away, what these people do. But he says one of the things that usually where the narcissist will not want them to come back is that they talked about narcissistic personality disorders, cluster B personality disorders, lack of empathy, the fact that there exist people with no empathy that are entitled and grandiose. Sometimes they're so toxic that they got themselves fired at their last job and screwed up a couple marriages because they're so dysfunctional. And that if the target, the person in the workplace that's been bullied and abused, finally leaves and cuts off ties saying screw you and the horse that you know your your you know cockroach mom rode in on because no one asked you to be born then they got to find something else right now then they might make they might stalk them online for a while and then and what's going to happen is the scapegoat's going to learn the state statutes like the texas electronic codes of 2001 and texas harassment laws section 42.07 where he can literally file criminal charges against these people and have them arrested as well as having their dishonest family members that have, might have some political power that are handling taxpayers' funds that's not quite used in quite a Jesus fashion, but more like a David Copperfield fashion, investigated and arrested and in prison. But I digress. Uh, you ever read Clausewitz, Total War? You ever heard of a Pyrrhic victory in military strategy? It's where you win the war, but the cost to you was so high you start wondering if it was worth it. Praise Jesus, I am that guy. How dare you? How dare you? Indeed. The Lord is with me and he don't like you. Scapegoating is abusive. It's rude. It's bullying. It's crap. Crappy people with crappy brains do it. And, and the thing is, when the narcissist turns everybody against you, they were already, you know, thinking that they could use you as their emotional punching bag. Do you really think that I'm responsible for your 900 pound behind? Go to the gym and lose some weight. I'm working on it. I've lost 25 pounds. I'm not slim yet, but I'm, I'm on my way. It's a progress, right? Right? It's a progress. You know, Ingve Malmsteen didn't become a genius overnight. He had to work at it. Even he said it. Uh, you think I'm responsible for the fact you can't put down your bottle of alcohol on Saturday nights and you fall over crapping yourself, drinking yourself into a stupor and making a fool out of yourself in front of your own family? I didn't do that. That's your baby. There you are, yes. I'm not the one who screwed up your marriages. I'm not the one who got you fired from your last job. I'm not the reason you're a beta cunt with low testosterone. Has nothing to do with me. Blame someone else. You suck. Or no, don't blame someone else. Take responsibility for your own shit. How dare you are. How dare you are indeed. So yes, you're a narcissist. So let's say that we take a, a random person. We call him, we call him, um, we call him John Doe. An average narcissist named John Doe. John Doe. Or he's an average Joe, right? In fact, let's just call him that. Let's take a random person. John Doe. Let's crush it together and just call him Joe. Average Joe. 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 Miserable Joe is self-loathing. Joe is narcissistic, self-centered, mean, abusive, entitled. He says mean things to people like, you're ugly, you're fat, you're worthless, you're stupid. I'm just joking. And he's got everybody in the workplace so trauma bonded to him that every time he insults their wife or insults their intelligence, they think, oh, that's just his sense of humor. But that's just a trauma response to his condescending, rude, and abusive behavior, which they have projected on the scapegoat to the scapegoat, to, took a hike and told him all where to, where to go and how to get there. And now it's like, yeah, what do we do? Well, they make fun of him online for a while. They maybe make some jokes at his expense, but he doesn't care because he's not there and he's never going back. He regrets ever meeting these cockroaches. Ultimately, a new scapegoat will have to be found. How dare you? 
And sometimes it's one of the flying monkeys that have actually helped, right? Because if you've got a narcissist in the workplace who's manipulated a bunch of toadies and little goblins to help him with his evil, what, what basically the little flying monkeys are saying is whatever the narcissist ma master, the narcissist ringleader says, I'll do. So if he turns around and says, let me bang your wife, uh, they have to say, okay, you can bang my wife, or I'll get you fired from your job. Oh, okay, we'll bang my wife. You're not begging my wife. You're a piece of crap. You're an a-hole, and I know what you are, and I'll expose your whole brain, but right now I've got too much going on. <laughs> By the way, you're in violation of state and federal statutes. Keep it up, sweetheart. Hey, did you forget when you targeted me? It was a bad call because I like to fight. I actually really enjoy fighting. How dare you? We thought you were going to pray for our show like that stupid Jesus on his stupid cross. Well, I believe in that stupid Jesus on his stupid cross. He's the son of God. He don't like narcissists. Read the Old Testament. How did it end for Jezebel? I don't think you can even spell Jezebel. Uh, uh, uh. What, what was it? The joke you told me in the workplace? You're a dumbass, dumbass. Uh, wow, that's original. There's some deep language for you. Did you get that at freaking Princeton? What is it Shahid Arabi says? Narcissists, uh, uh, they insult your intelligence to um, conceal their own stupidity. Well, if you're trying to conceal your own stupidity, average Joe, you're not doing a very good job at it. Oh, we're so stupid. Yeah, we know. 